Behind New York and California, it's the state of Georgia that has more film production than any other U.S. state. But that booming business is now imperiled because of the draconian anti-abortion law pushed through by the state's GOP legislators and signed by Republican Governor Brian Kemp. The law effectively bans abortions after the six weeks of pregnancy before many women even know they're pregnant and has criminal penalties for doctors who perform the procedure. In response, companies including Netflix, Disney, and our own parent company, NBC Universal, have said they would consider pulling production if the new law takes effect, which would, of course, have severe economic consequences. Now, Governor Kemp has postponed a trip to meet with film companies, reportedly because he was worried about the fallout. And so into the void comes the woman who ran against him in 2018. Stacey Abrams. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported yesterday that Abrams, along with the head of the abortion rights group NARAL, will meet with film executives in Los Angeles next week to discuss these issues. And joining me now from Atlanta is Stacey Abrams. Um, what is the, what's the agenda, what's the intent and goal behind this meeting? Well, as you pointed out, the state of Georgia has 92,000 employees in the film industry, $9.5 billion in economic impact. But unfortunately, we have a governor who's not only refused to go to Hollywood, he's actually refusing to respond to requests from 15 of the largest companies in Georgia involved in the film industry to meet with them. And so my goal is very simple. I want to protect jobs in Georgia. I want to protect women in Georgia. And having built relationships, not only with the film industry, but with other industries that are here in Georgia, I was asked to come and have a conversation about what the bill does, what the bill means, and how we can best support women and the film industry. And I'm there to provide information. There are a lot of folks who are uh, who are supportive of abortion rights who are pretty horrified by the legislation in Georgia and in Alabama and Missouri and those other places and, and wondering about what what can be done. What is your view about the use of uh, essentially pulling production as a kind of point of political leverage in response to this legislation? I support and understand the emotional and the political pull of a boycott call. Uh, I grew up in the Deep South. Boycotts have long been a part of how civil rights have advanced. But we also have to have a long-term understanding of what's happened. Republicans have spent the last 40 years building a narrative, but also building the capacity to push these bans across the country. And simply taking down or taking away jobs is not going to solve the fundamental problem of political power. And so my intention is to stay and fight, to build the political power, to not only fight back against these bans and fight back against a, you know, forced pregnancy, but to build the political capacity to not have to have this fight again for 40 more years. We are in an inflection point in this country where the power to make progress is real, but we have to have the investment and the foresight and the strategy to make it to bring it to fruition. How, how central was choice and, and, and access to abortion and abortion rights in that in the race that you ran with Brian Camp in that state? There could not have been a clear contrast. He said in response to a bill that passed in Mississippi that he wanted to have the strictest abortion law in the country. I very clearly and very repeatedly spoke about my support for choice in the state of Georgia. But it's not just about the right to an abortion. It's also about the ancillary health care choices that are being made. Georgia has the highest maternal mortality rate for black women in the nation and one of the highest overall in the country. We are losing doctors. We are losing hospitals. And when you have a state where more than half of the counties do not have an OBGYN, this kind of bill is not only crippling, it is fatal. Hmm. And so my push is to say that we have to be thinking not just about the politics, but the people. And this is a very clear issue for me. We have been, I've been unequivocal about my support for reproductive choice, and it is a choice that women should have. It is a choice that should be upheld by the courts and upheld by our legislatures, and my mission is to make certain that in the state of Georgia, we have leaders who respect that choice. Um, you're, you're, you're running a group right now, I think, called Fair Fight Action. You, you obviously stayed very uh, involved in, in Georgia politics. There was some news the other day uh, about your campaign, your 2018 campaign, handing over a bunch of documents to uh, the state ethics office, I think is, is the office, uh, in response to essentially a subpoena uh, investigation. What, what is that investigation? What's going on there? So Fair Fight Action had two pieces of news last week. Number one, we received a, a response from a federal judge on our motion to dismiss, or sorry, the Republicans' motion to dismiss that would have eliminated our challenge to the voting system in the state of Georgia. In an 85-page decision, Judge Stephen Jones refused the motion to dismiss and said that our claims were colorable and needed to move forward. 
And what we believe is, as part of a political vendetta from Brian Kemp and others, he has empowered David Amati, the ethics, and it's not actually an ethics office, but the campaign finance chief, to investigate mm -hmm. my campaign. We have responded with 3,600 pages. We've responded to every real claim, but they also asked for personal correspondence that had nothing to do with the campaign, and we've refused to give them that information until they give us the legally required supposition that says that this is necessary information. So, this is a political vendetta, and it's part of Brian Kemp's pattern. He targets communities of color. He targets groups that push forward voting rights, and he uses his power and the power of his cronies to try to suppress voices and suppress votes. And we will not stand for it either through Fair Fight Action or through my former campaign. So you, you view this fundamentally as, as in bad faith. I mean, that this is that the, the enterprise Absolutely. of this investigation is essentially political in, in your mind. Absolutely. I mean, look, the campaign finance office has absolute right to ask for financial records, and we provided 3,600 pages. They have the right to inquire as to whether or not we operated in bad faith. We did not, and we've provided proof of that. What they do not have the right to do is try to target black and brown organizations simply because of their affiliation with my, with my campaign. They do not have the right to ask for information that is outside the scope of their authority, and they do not have the right to politicize a process that should not be partisan. When Republicans won in years past, they never took this type of unprecedented action against mm. their opponents. And worse, what's happened is that this repeats behavior from Brian Kemp, who, when too many Koreans were being registered by an organization, he raided their offices. When too many African Americans won seats in Quitman County, in the Quitman School Board, he arrested them. He, ha he allowed his cronies to have sheriffs follow African Americans in counties where they saw too much voting. He has consistently used the power of his office and those of his allies to target black and brown communities. And unfortunately for him, I have both the agency and the wherewithal to fight back. All right, Stacey Abrams, thank you so much for sharing your time tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.